Thank God for this thing. My husband got it for me. Some people think it's some people think it's ridiculous, a deaf woman with an iPhone, but that's just ignorance and there's no app for that. Plus, text messages was actually based on the technology that deaf people have been using since before the iPhone, so there. Plus, with the iPhone and email, I am completely accessible at all times, which isn't always such a good thing. You should know, though, that this little thing is a major concession for me. I don't like to fit in. I spent too much of my life trying too hard. The only thing worth fitting into is your genes. That's what I tell my son. Hmm? What? I'm sorry, one more time, I'm just like super deaf. With how often we hear the hyperbole, I'm so deaf, we assume that it's not that big of a deal. But according to research at the Research US Center, 3.5% of people are born deaf. With my mom, my mom was actually part of that percentage. And although she is only partially deaf and has a hearing aid, we are always hearing the very common, huh? My mom has it easy being only partially deaf. But according to the Dallas Hearing Foundation, babies with, with, a, with a deaf parent slash parents have a 10% chance of being born deaf. With statistics so low, this couple didn't think that they would have to worry, but they weren't so lucky. In Census by Catherine Roth. Some people wonder if it's rude to ask if I was born deaf. No, it's not. And no, I wasn't. I was born perfect. I liked the sound of my mother singing, and I liked the sound of my father laughing. But when I was 11, I had a major war with meningitis, and then poof, I couldn't hear mom singing, and dad stopped laughing. At first, I thought it was going to be great. I was sure that my other senses would become heightened or something, like superpowers. I would be deaf girl with the power of smell, more, or something. But, but alas, I don't have heightened senses, and of course, I never really felt all that super. <sighs> I like you. You're brave, asking a deaf woman all these hard questions. I don't find a lot of people who ask, just a lot of people who assume. Anyway, I went to what you call a normal school. We call them hearing schools, um, but I was never really good in school. It wasn't because I wasn't smart. In fact, the words smart and elite were quite frequently mentioned with my name. The problem was fitting in. People didn't really understand me on so many levels until I met Terry. He was in my intro to college chemistry class and the irony was never lost on us. At first, he smiled a lot. Then he would pass notes to me. That's actually how we went on our first date. What did he call it? Email circa 1989. Eventually, Terry learned sign language. His hands were slow and clumsy, but so was my heart, so it all worked out. Terry did not know what he was getting himself into. When we went house shopping, we had to find a deaf-friendly house, one that you could see each other from different rooms so that we could communicate. We needed light systems and hardwood floors so that we could find the vibrations of the phone bells when they would ring. He was overwhelmed. We spent eight months looking for a house until we found this place. I think we would retire and die in this house. And when Spencer was born, it really felt like the house was a home. It wasn't supposed to happen. Statistically speaking, deafness is always is almost always one generation thick um but and over 90 percent of people with deaf par with deaf parents ha is born um is born hearing friendly so um spencer was going to be my normal loud musical little boy when we found out that he wasn't going to be that that he wasn't going to fit in i made sure I made the decision that I would never try to make him into something that he wasn't. That is why I insisted against the cochlear implant. It's a device that provides a sense of hearing for deaf people. I wouldn't even discuss it and would purposely ignore the subject when it came up. This, of course, made Terry furious. You aren't thinking of the good it will do. You aren't thinking of our son. You are only worried about your pride. But it isn't about pride, it is about my son. He will be born perfect, and it isn't something that you will have to be fixed. 
We argued for the last four months of my pregnancy. But when Spencer was finally born, the argument stopped because we were both so in awe of the little man and his big brown eyes. We started him in hearing school because Terry uh, wanted him to try it. He was labeled so many things in those first three years. First, he was mute, then he was hearing challenged, then he was deaf, then he was special, then he was hearing impaired, then he was ear disabled. The R word was thrown in there a couple of times. And it was right then that I decided to move him to the Clark School of the Deaf. For the next six years, he loved school. He would come home with slang sign language and new stories about his multitudes of friends. And needless to say, I was proud that I had raised a son who was so comfortable and so happy in the world. Spencer learned about the cochlear implant at school. He said that maybe for his high school graduation present, we could sit down as a family and talk about that personally. I was so mad at him for that. I felt betrayed. Terry told me it wasn't my life and I needed to let Spencer find his own way. And you can imagine how I took that bit of advice. When I was finally ready to talk about the issue, Spencer smiled and those big brown eyes melted whatever resistance I had left. He said he would do research and bring us home information. On the way out the door, he made some smart aleck comment about how in the future, if I want to get my way, I should remember that the silent treatment doesn't work on the deaf. And that was the last moment that I had with my son alive. You see, he must have been so excited and wanted to show me how wrong I was because if he wasn't that excited, then he would have been more careful. He would have waited for the cross the crosswalk signal. He would have seen the truck coming. And what did, what was a deaf boy doing at a blind intersection, daring fate? Why did I have to be so proud, so selfish? When he was born, why didn't I say yes? When he wanted it, why didn't I say yes? Why didn't I listen? I could have done anything other than what I did and he would have been fine. And the worst part was I couldn't even hear the phone ring. Terry's big, slow, clumsy hands had to tell me that my little boy was gone forever. Text message. It's Terry. The funeral director claimed the date. Now I have to text everybody. Thank God for email. I don't even know what to say, even if I tried.